Hey, everybody. Welcome back to LettermanRoad.com. I am Jeremy Birmingham. This is Talking Stuff, the Ohio State Recruiting Podcast brought to you by Buyers Automotive. I am joined, as always, by my good buddy, Spencer Holbrook. Uh, wow, Spencer, things are happening. Uh, the, 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 the recruiting world is shaking. Uh, all week long, there has been all this buzz, 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 buzz about the class of 2022 and all these uh very vague tweets being made by by that group and on wednesday night we got our first taste of what that really could mean for ohio state when uh, quinn ewers the country's number one ranked quarterback the number one ranked player in the country according to 247 sports decommitted from the university of texas the school he dreamt of playing at his whole life uh, as a child there in uh, outside of dallas in south lake texas um and well, Spencer, it really looks like Quinn Ewers is going to end up committing to Ohio State. Yeah, and that is absolutely massive. I, I don't think we can understate that. That would be like if Justin Fields had committed to Ohio State straight out of high school. Uh, this is a can't miss prospect. He's probably the can't miss prospect, the, the most can't miss prospect that we've seen since Trevor Lawrence and the just and Justin Fields and that tandem that came out in that I think 2018 class. Like this is a massive deal. And if it has the implications for Ohio State that we think it will, it's an even bigger deal. It's a big deal nationally now, but if that news pops, you know, it's potential has the potential to be uh, uh, the start of a snowball effect in Columbus. Yeah, I mean, that class of 2022 for Ohio State, which is the second ranked class in the country right now, but it's still super early, but they have six commitments. But of those six outside of Bennett Christian, uh, pretty much everybody has a very strong Ohio tie, even though Jerry Brown isn't didn't grow up in Ohio, even though Desan McCullough didn't grow up in Ohio. Uh, they both have Ohio roots. They're both born in, in Cincinnati. So what you see with a guy like Quinn Ewers, if this ends up coming to fruition, and I have no reason to think it won't at this point, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the potential contenders in a moment. But um, this is Corey Dennis going to Dallas, Texas, and taking the number one ranked player in the country who's been committed to Texas, the school, out, as I said. Out. Sure. Not the out. number Go one, ahead. not the number one quarterback in the country, the number one player. Right. The number the one number ranked one player. Overall player. Uh, going to Texas and taking that player from Tom Herman and Mike Yersich, who are two former Ohio State coordinators. Uh, and again, it's difficult to overstate how crazy that sounds when you say it, because we've been sort of waiting and Corey Dennis, because of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has sort of been put on the back burner. It was his first year uh, as the quarterbacks coach at Ohio state. But when, when he got hired, one of the reasons was that he has a really unique ability to connect with uh, recruits and their families. He does a super good job just being really personable and himself. Uh, but we haven't seen that bear fruit yet because Kyle McCord was already committed in the class of 2021. He hasn't really been put on the spot, but uh, this potential commitment from Quinn Ewers, who has been to Columbus. So that's one thing that is important here. He actually has a met, he actually met Corey Dennis before he was a high school football player. He met Ryan Day when Ryan Day was the quarterback's coach at Ohio State, which is the day he got offered. He got offered by Ohio State before he ever played a game in high school. Um, which is extremely rare, but Ohio State saw him throw as a uh, up, upcoming freshman and was like, wow, this kid is going to be something. I, I wrote about him when when that visit happened, and I said he was the best quarterback in attendance that day, and that was a camp that, in, that had Dwan Mathis and a few other big-time players uh, there. But, I mean, if you're Texas, uh, it, do you even let Tom Herman get out of, you know, the way of this now? I mean, how, how did they come back from that? Well, the promise right now for Texas was they, they're on the come up still because they've got the number one quarterback committed and that could lead to better to better days at Texas. But now you kind of look around and you're like, well, what's going on here? You've got a three-year starter at quarterback that's not producing right now. You've got an awful defense that can't get things figured out despite having mounds of talent. You oh, don't another, have... Oh, another former Ohio State coordinator there. I yeah, you, you have uh, no number one overall recruit, by the way, in your backyard, while plenty of kids in your from your backyard are going elsewhere and having a lot of success. Uh, this is a almost a death blow to Tom Herman, 
But also the other thing I wanted to add about this is whoever gets Quinn Ewers is in a better position because the other top schools in the country don't have him. It's just yeah. as important that Ohio State has – it's just as important that Ohio State has him than Clemson doesn't have him, Alabama doesn't have him, Texas, Oklahoma, any of the schools that you could think of. It's just as important that they don't have Quinn Ewers as it would be for Ohio State to get him. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just having this thought, and you can tell me if you think that I'm insane – when you look at Texas, and we all know that what happens when assistants leave a place like Ohio State for their own program, they try to emulate as much of that Ohio State program as possible. We saw it with Chris Ash. We'll, we'll see it with Greg Schiano at Rutgers, even though he'll bring back a little bit of the stuff that he used to have there. But Tom Herman took essentially everything from the Ohio State program and tried to implement it in Austin, Texas. And I, you can't blame him. I mean, it's obviously what Urban Meyer built was extremely successful. But there's Tom Herman, there's Mike Yersitz, there's Dan Drayton, there's Chris Ash, there's uh, the entire recruiting group there uh, led by um, uh, Derek Chang, uh, their, their player personnel was for, at Ohio State. Like they took everything from Ohio State and tried to make a Buckeyes te Texas type program, right? A Buckeyes in Texas. But if you're a player like Quinn Ewers and you've watched this happen and you know that this isn't is not coming to pass at, at Texas. It's, they're not getting better. Why would you not just go to the original? Of, it's also of, not genuine. Right. right. And, and yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It, it, it is also not built the same way. And I guess if you have an opportunity to go play for the real Ohio State or the generic Ohio State at this point, which is crazy to say about Texas. And I, I mean, I don't, I know people are going to, flame me for that or whatever but like texas is just not where they are and i think it's got to be frustrating and, and they're not the only team in this conversation michigan a few other schools that right now are just not what they think they are on the recruiting trail and it has to be a very very uh big wake-up call because quinn ewers leads potentially to caleb burton okay so Caleb burton and quinn ewers have been rumored to be a, a pretty likely package deal down the road Caleb Burton, oh yeah, the number one ranked receiver in the country who lives 15 minutes outside of Austin, Texas, who's mentored by Garrett Wilson, who went to high school in Austin, Texas, who's been watching Jackson Smith and Jigba, who went to school outside of Dallas, Texas, who it's, there's Armani Winfield, another receiver up near Dallas, who's very interested in Ohio State. There's a Donovan Jackson leaving the state of Texas to go to Ohio State in the class of 2021, a five-star offensive lineman. There was Baron Browning and Jeff Okuda and J.K. Dobbins and Kendall Sheffield. And, uh, and like, what is going on? How on earth uh, does Texas recover from that? I mean, I, I just, it, uh, that's not even mentioning the dudes that they lose to Alabama and LSU. Yeah. Well, kind of more justified to losing to LSU because we don't often see how we don't often think about how close Baton Rouge is to tech is to the state of Texas. Sure. So I mean, it's, it's, a, it's little, a local school. Yeah. It's a little more understandable, but when you even see Texas A&M starting to recruit better, you see Oklahoma come into Texas and take guys that they want Alabama. Uh, I'm sure there are plenty of other schools. SMU is getting some guys that, that right. Texas probably could pull if they if they really, you know, had things rolling. SMU probably wouldn't be where it's at. And that's maybe a little bit of a stretch because they don't really recruit the same guys. But the point being is like there's obviously problems there. There's obviously yeah, and, problems. And Ohio State always finds blood in the water wherever it can, you know, whether it's in North Carolina, Virginia, uh, Arizona, California. Texas like they they always find that blood in the water and right now there's a lot of blood in that Texas water well what I think is fascinating because I mean we have talked about that a number of times in the past like they they kind of know when there's a, a, a soft spot and it was Ohio State exploiting that soft spot back in 2016 that led to Tom Herman being hired at Texas and now the likelihood is that Tom Herman will not make it through another season at Texas and now that soft spot emerges again and when we're talking about those emojis and, and, you know, vague tweets from the class of 22, we can now safely assume that Quinn Ewers is one of them. But on Tuesday, crystal ball predictions from, you know, pretty tied in people came in for Caleb Burton to Ohio State, as we mentioned already. 
Damani Jackson, a five-star defensive back from California who Michigan fans had assumed was sort of like a Michigan lock. He's been tied to Michigan and Texas, among others. He's supposed to be visiting Michigan and Texas, but now crystal balls are coming into Ohio State. Um, there is a, a potential here for a true, I mean, not to steal from the election upcoming, but like a scarlet wave could be coming towards uh, Columbus when it comes to the class of 2022. And I'm not going to go player by player, but I mean, even if we're just talking those three guys right now, th that's a pretty tremendous uh, rush of, uh, of energy and, and uh, juice for the Ohio State 2022 class. And if we're being honest, you know, this, this class is already pretty well put together with just six guys. It's a good group, a core group of six, but it's the end of October of these guys' junior year. It's not yeah. like this is a, this is way too early to be committing or anything. This is the time where you start to pick up some momentum on the recruiting class. Maybe the commits will hear this and think that they're wrong. I think this class could use a jolt of momentum. Like I, I think they have some with the linebackers and, and these guys are good recruiters. I'm not discounting what they can do themselves as recruiters, but sometimes a class just needs another jolt. And I think this class could use one. And I think it's, it, it's in the business of getting one really soon. Yeah, well, no offense to Bennett Christian, who's obviously a, a, a highly sought after player, or Tegra Tushabola, but uh, Bennett as a as a tight end from Georgia and Tegra, who doesn't talk to recruits and doesn't really talk to media and is just sort of in his own world, you need a spark plug on the offensive side of the ball because you have CJ Hicks and Deshaun McCullough handling that the capably on defense. And so I'm fascinated to see what could happen if Quinn Ewers and maybe Caleb Burton pull the trigger uh, relatively soon together. Uh, Caleb is interesting because the, the two schools that he'd been really mentioned with was Oklahoma and Texas. Again, if Texas is, let's call them out in those recruitments right now, Oklahoma already has, I think, three 2022 receivers. They've sort of purchased themselves. I don't mean purchased like Boston players, but like they, they're out of that in the fact that uh, it's going to be a hard sell at this point to to Caleb Burton to say, hey, we already have three other receivers in this class. You could come in and be the fourth with a year and some odd you know, months to go before signing day. The Buckeyes and Cape coupled that with the fact that Caleb Burton is out this season because he injured his knee in, in his first game. There's like this, it's maybe the right time for him to make a decision so he can focus on rehab and everything else. And then the simple truth, the recruiting dead period may not be over till March. So if you think about where things are going from here, this is a, a March to maybe December type of real open window for recruiting for that class of 2022. And so it makes sense in a lot of ways for these kids to start making early decisions. And it's based on the relationships they have with the coaches and with Brian Hartline and Caleb Burton, that one has been blossoming. And then again, as I said, with Quinn Ewers, it, it goes back three years already to before he was even in high school. And it happens to be with Corey Dennis, who was on the Ohio State staff as, an, as a, a grad assistant. And with Ryan Day, who was on the staff as a quarterbacks coach. Yeah, and I think one of the things that I wanted to highlight in this entire Quinn Ewers conversation was in this statement. I, I mentioned it to you before the show. You know, he says, my family and I also thank Texas Longhorns fans for their interest in sport. I soon will have a firm decision on where I will spend the next few formative years of my life and career. That is a Texas is no longer in in the running here. That is yeah, a that very definitive statement on. Thank you, Texas, for two months of taking my commitment, but no thanks. I am on to, quite frankly, bigger and better things. And like I said, the momentum for this class on that offensive side, if a five-star quarterback doesn't want to go there, a five-star receiver is not going to want to go there, that's all trending scarlet and gray right now. Yeah, and, and you know, there is other another couple schools in the mix for, for the – Quinn Ewers, and I'm sure he's going to, you know, bandy about a little bit in his mind. Clemson has not offered him yet, but they're a school that is regularly linked to him. I don't know. Maybe it's too late for them to get involved. I guess we'll see. Um, Alabama, of course, Oklahoma, of course, those schools are always in the mix for, for top quarterbacks. So um, it is looking like a, a big win for Ohio State in the Quinn Ewers sweepstakes. And if I had a crystal ball, which I've not, I don't, and uh, I would, I would have it on Ohio State, and I would think that you could see a decision there within the next two to three weeks. So that's, uh, I don't think it's going to be a, a long process. I don't think he would have decommitted from Texas if he wasn't intending on making another decision soon. 
um, because he could have very easily just stayed committed and done like what Paris Johnson did uh, a year and a half ago at Ohio State and just let it kind of ride out, especially knowing that he is in no hurry because he can't make visits elsewhere. So that's good news for Ohio State in the class of 2022. But Spencer, we're going to introduce a new game on Talking Stuff, the Ohio State Recruiting Podcast brought to you by Letterman Row. And let's assume that we already played who's in, who's out, and uh, Quinn Ewers, we think, is in. Um, but the new game, Spencer, is called the Ouch Meter. And today, we're going to put two players in the Ouch Meter and talk about them. We'll start with Quinn Ewers. I want to get your score on the Ouch Meter. How bad does Quinn Ewers decommitting from Texas, Texas, ouch? uh for texas and what scale what scale are we on one to ten? Oh, oh yeah i mean we're creating this uh game as we go let's say like on a scale of one to five band-aids how many band-aids is the ouchie ten like <laughs> this, this this guy he, he's making one up the five. rules one to five you are going like way over that five like this is like i said i think I don't want to pat myself on the back, but when I said this is a death blow for Texas, like this is like the one area they still had to cling on to hope with Tom Herman. You know, at least he's got this this uh, ace in the hole, this 2022 number one overall can't miss prospect uh, that NFL scouts are already looking at as this, you know, it's gone. It's gone. So you're it's saying that five band aid, five band aid, ouchie, bro. I, I mean, I don't disagree. It's a, Definite five band aid ouchie for Texas. Um, and uh, that seems like a no brainer. So let's move on to the other player in the ouch meter right now. And that is Ohio uh, lineman Blake Miller, who Spencer and I talked about last week. And Spencer, we were right on. I said I, it didn't feel right to me. Um, Blake Miller released his top five schools and included Ohio State, Michigan, Clemson, Florida, and Auburn. And I said on last week's show, and so did you, like, if he wanted to go to Ohio State, what had stopped him from doing it already? And on Wednesday night, an hour before uh, Gwen Ewer's announcement that he was decommitting from Texas, Blake Miller announced he was committing to Clemson. Yeah, it's one of those things. Clemson gets those uh, OKGs and is just cool with you know taking their guys. And he's the ninth ranked player in Ohio. He's a high priority Ohio State target. I would assume you know in most people's eyes and. Uh, yeah, he's he's off officially off the board. Not a guy that you're going to really be easily uh, flipping. So I think that's that commitment is probably pretty solid, especially for him to do it right now when he had a chance the entire time to commit to Ohio State. Ohio State doesn't offer those guys in state unless they're ready to take a commitment from him. Right. And for him to to back off, back off, back off, and then commit to Clemson, you think this thing's over? Yeah, I'm going to give it two ouchies, two band aids on the ouch oh. meter, and I I don't want to. I don't want to dismiss the loss. And I know people will say that I'm doing that, but we'll get into the reasons here after. I would be interested in your, uh, how many Band-Aids on the ouch meter for, for Blake Miller picking clubs. I would say three, just because it's an offensive tackle. Ohio State needs tackles in this class. You can, If you can find them in state that are Ohio's, truly Ohio State caliber players, that's better because – to be honest, you really most of the time don't have to put as much effort into recruiting those guys. And if they're right. Ohio State caliber, you know, that's a good thing for your class uh, to have in-state guys to recruit the out-of-state guys. So I would just give it three just because he's an in-state guy. But I do understand, you know, some of the things you're about to go over. Um, I could see why you would go two and maybe even one in some instances. This just doesn't seem like a loss that Ohio State is really concerned about on the recruiting trail. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. The, the Buckeyes uh, – weren't expecting him to commit to Clemson this early. Okay. So I want to be clear there. It, it is not something that they, this isn't a matter where Ohio state staff had backed off of Blake Miller or anything like that. It, it, he's a player that they really liked. They offered him very early, but it, even when they offered him and the first time that I had him on Bermanology, I, I just, I didn't feel like this was a kid who really wanted to be at Ohio state. And there's, there's these moments in recruiting where, you understand that from a personality standpoint, someone might not be the perfect fit for your program. And it's not a knock on the kid. It's not a knock on another program. It's that Ohio State is a super intense, super, no other way to put it, balls to the walls type place every minute of every day. Clemson is certainly that way when it comes to playing football. 
but I don't get the sense that Clemson is that way all day, every day. Ohio State is. And I think that in some instances, it's better to miss on that player now than have him be on the roster for three years and never truly feel like he fit into the program and end up leaving later. So uh, that's, I, I just don't think from a personality fit that Blake Miller and Ohio State ever made a, a good match. And that's why I constantly, anytime we talked about him, like, I just didn't feel like that was a kid who wanted to be a, a Buckeye. And it wasn't because he didn't, I mean, he grew up in Ohio. He liked the Buckeyes. His family's all Buckeyes fans, but it, not every kid is this, is wired the same way. Not every kid is wired like Paris Johnson, where it's like, I want to go, and, you know, rah, 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 you know, go crazy all the time. Like this is a kid in Strongsville, Ohio, Clemson, South Carolina is a whole lot more like Strongsville, Ohio than Columbus, Ohio is. And so, you know, it, it's obviously a good player, but I think the timing of it, giving Ohio State plenty of time to replace him down the road. There are players in Ohio like Emil Wagner, who's the second ranked player in the state, who may be a little bit uh, less developed on the offensive line right now, but probably has a higher upside. Uh, there's players like Ryan Bear, who's a really big kid, another true tackle body. I'm not sure that Blake Miller is a true tackle body. Um, and for all those reasons, that's why I'm saying on the ouch meter, it's two band-aids for Blake Miller and Ohio State. And again, like I said, Clemson is always going to get those. And I, I do like to use this term, the, the OKGs. You got to have your kind of guys in your program. And that's what Clemson thrives on. And, and Blake Miller seemed to fit uh, the Clemson kind of guys more than he did the Ohio State kind of guys. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong nope. with that at all. Nothing at all. And, and it's, it's, you know, people will see it and go, oh, this is a lot like the Jackson Carmen situation. And it's as no similarity at all to Jackson Carmen picking Ohio State or picking Clemson over Ohio State back in the, in the class of 2018. That was two weeks before signing day. That was a commitment Ohio State had felt like they were right in the thick of for three plus years. This is in no way, shape, and or form similar other than the fact that it's an Ohio prospect who chose Clemson. So uh, Spencer Holbrook, I'm Jeremy Birmingham. This is Letterman Row. Uh, we are talking stuff about Ohio State recruiting uh, brought to you by Byers Auto. And uh, that's where we're going to kick this episode out the door and, and, and head into the weekend at Penn State. So uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Hopefully uh, we will talk to you next week. If you like the show, please rate, review, subscribe. Uh, we always welcome constructive feedback as well. So thanks for that when, when you do give it constructively. Yeah. So. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.